tell you folks, I am super excited here to be doing interviews again. It has been um, a sweet minute since I've done any of these, but I'm back. Uh, I got asked to do one with some people I've always wanted to talk to because there's this company called Legion M and I don't know if you've heard of them. You should have by now if you really like film, quite frankly, and we'll tell you why here. But the CEO, Paul Scanlon, and the president, Jeff Aniston, are here to talk to me about Legion M. Now, before you like, I, I don't know what that is. Why am I watching this? Trust me, if you're a film fan and you want to see the films and TV shows that you want to get made, get made. And if you'd like to be in on the ground floor of that, I swear this is not a pyramid scheme. I swear, and I can prove it here, then you want to listen to this interview. Let me bring in my guests, Jeff and Paul. Hello, Jeff and Paul. How are you? Hey, Chris. Thank you. Love that introduction. Thank <laughs> yeah, you. thank you. I feel like you just kind of, you know, wrapped it all up. <laughs> oh, okay. I feel like you're one of us. Oh, wait, what? I see what you did there. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the first guest to do that. <laughs> no, you are not. But a lot of people just go goobble, gobble, goobble, gobble. So. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, you guys, uh, y'all are out in California. Yeah, yeah, we're in we're in the Bay Area. Our company's based in LA, uh, but we're kind of split. Um, half the team is down in Los Angeles. The other half is up in the Bay Area. We we did that intentionally. Uh, we mm -hmm. wanted to be kind of a uh, Northern California and Southern California mashup. Fair enough. Well, let's, so people know, okay, fine. What is Legion M? Why don't you guys tell us exactly just the, the pitch, what Legion M is? Sure. Yeah, I can, I can start and Jeff, feel free to fill in. But um, so Legion M is, we're the world's first fan owned entertainment company. And what that means is we're literally uniting entertainment fans, film fans and TV series fans. And, you know, people that go to Comic-Con and go to film festivals and, you know, we're we're uniting them together to co-own our own studio uh, because we feel like there's an opportunity for fans to unite. I mean, we're the ones that have all the power in this industry. Uh, the only thing stopping us from exerting that power is organization. And uh, we're organizing our community uh, as shareholders. So they have, you know, emotional and financial upside in our success. And with that community as our shareholder base and slash our built-in audience, we're producing movies and TV series. And, you know, we're, we're mission driven. Our goal is to, you know, evoke and, and instigate more creativity um, in this entertainment industry that we love so much. You know, we love all the sequels and reboots, but we want to create new franchises and, you know, Hollywood is, uh, is, pretty centered around the built-in audience. And, you know, we believe that building our audience into our shareholder base gives us more freedom and latitude to bring new franchises to market. So we've been a part of, you know, many movies that we'll, we'll talk about today. We've got probably over 25 projects in development and it's been a blast. So you mentioned you've been around here since 2016 and that you have, in fact, already done a lot of projects and people should really know some of these because they do know some of these, like the really tremendous film with Anne Hathaway and Jason Sudeikis, Colossal, that I just, I mean, it was colossal. It, it was fantastic. And then, of course, the, I mean, like the moment in culture that was Mandy with Nicolas Cage. I mean, Jesus, it's still probably the, one of the most gift things out there, you know, Cage acting all crazy. I remember seeing that in the theater and people just lost their minds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that movie is truly remarkable. And it's, it's, it's funny because it can be a little polarizing. Some people absolutely love it and some people are like, what the hell is going on? But I think the uh, the thing is, everybody agrees. Like it's a it's it's notable. It's it's worth watching. It's it's developed this amazing, um, you know, almost cult like following uh, that we're really proud of because we th that was one of our very early projects. Um, we can't take any credit for having made it. It was Panos and uh, the team at SpectraVision and all that that, that, that put the movie together. Uh, but we were uh, an investor in it. We were an equity investor. So the money that we raised from our shareholders, uh, we turn around and we invest in some projects. We produce projects ourselves. Uh, we partner with some... Um, uh, some studios and distributors on their projects, like uh, like the case of Colossal. 
Um, but it's, uh, you know, that's really what Legion M is all about. You know, our money helped make that film possible. Uh, and very specifically, uh, our money went to help pay or to pay for Johan Johansson and the soundtrack. That was one of the things that they used the money for, um, on well, that what film. What a fantastic soundtrack and sad that it was, that was his last work, right? Before we passed yeah, away. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And it's, you know, so it's, it's something that we, you know, we take, we take pride in stuff like that, where there's things that literally exist because of the fact that we did it. And then of course, really, you know, fun, you know, hopefully what happens is that as we continue to grow, um, you know, when you get involved with Legion M, when you invest, you're not backing it like a Kickstarter project, you're actually investing to own a piece of it. So if we're successful, um, then we, you know, we tell people it's like investing in Disney back when it was just Walt and Roy and just getting off the ground. So like, we'll talk some more about some of your other projects here, but like, so people know, okay, that's exciting. I could be on the ground floor of a movie that's as cool as those movies or some of the others that we'll talk about later. Uh, how, how would you, anyone even get started with this? And then how would that work? Yeah, sure. So I can take that. Um, so it's, it's really, we made it really simple. And we also, um, we don't want people to feel like they have to invest their life savings to get it to be a part of Legion M. So we, we allow people to join for free. So there's no obligation to actually make an investment. Um, and we do that so that people can kind of get to know us and know what we're about. I mean, you had mentioned earlier, like, you know, that it's definitely not a pyramid scheme. I, mean, I can assure you we are not a pyramid scheme, but anyone raising money on the internet, you know, is is kind of a, you know, a yellow flag at least, and you need to do your due, due, due diligence. And, um, but if people do want to invest and, you know, we, we recommend it because we think, you know, it's, it's an amazing opportunity and we have over 35,000 investors already. Um, the minimum investment's a hundred dollars. Uh, and you know, when we have a round open, we don't have, uh, around, well, we have a waiting list for our round. Our last round sold out. It was one of the most successful rounds we've ever had, um, you know, as far as the number of investors and the size of the, the round. Um, but so the minimum investment is $100. Our long-term goal, uh, just to put it out there, and it's built into our logo, which is uh, Legion M, and the M has a bar over it, which is the Roman numeral for 1 million. Our goal is to unite 1 million entertainment fans and take over Hollywood. And so even if everyone invested $100, we'd have $100 million to invest in projects that have a million people emotionally and financially invested in them and a million people that had a voice in determining what projects we wanna get behind. And we just believe that fundamentally that could be one of the most powerful and influential and amazing companies in Hollywood. And, you know, the average today, the average investor puts like $400. We have a lot of people that have invested in every round, um, you know, and we're grateful to that. But, you know, we don't make a big distinction between, oh, how much have you raised, you know, or how much have you invested? You have a bigger vote if you invest more money. It's not like that. You have more upside if you if you invest more because you'll own more shares. Uh, but everyone has the same voting power. And, you know, we do a lot. We'll talk about it today. Uh, but we really do a lot to understand, you know, Jeff and I feel like the we are only as good as the projects that we choose and the projects that we choose need to be relevant and resonate with our community. And so we're really genuine in our outreach to our community to understand what what are they interested in? We feel like having that data and that input and the insight that we get from our, our, our community is another differentiator for Legion M and another reason why the company uh, can be so valuable. And you mentioned like about the projects that are being chosen and rounds for these projects being funded. So how does something make it to the point where it's a round where you're putting it up for selection? How do you get to the point where like, this is something that we want to put in front of investors and say, hey, do you want to invest in this? Yeah, so it's it's uh, first of all, we should decouple two things. Uh, when you invest in Legion M, you're not actually investing in a movie. Uh, you are investing in the company. So to use the analogy early, you're investing in Disney. You're not investing in Snow White uh, <laughs> as their film or Mandy as our film. Um, 
we raise money in rounds. So we started back in 2016 uh, and we raised some money. And uh, we just, uh, as Paul said, we have a we just sold out and we currently have a waiting list. We're trying to reopen and, and, and see if we can free up a little bit more room um, in our eighth round. And so over that time with each successive round, as the company has grown, uh, the price of the shares has increased. And, you know, just because we've done more and we've, you know, we've demonstrated uh, what we can do. When we started off, it was literally just Paul and I saying like, oh my God, wouldn't it be an amazing idea if we had a company owned by fans? And, you know, now we're here eight years, well, not eight years, sorry, six years later. Uh, we've uh, we've been involved with all these amazing films from Colossal and Mandy to the Jay and Silent Bob reboot. And um, the, you know, we just produced our first movie. We just sold our first uh, series to a streamer. Um, and so as the companies progress, uh, you know, the, the share price changes each time. And so, so that's kind of the way the rounds work as far as like, uh, soliciting the feedback from the fans, uh, for our projects. Like Paul said, that's literally the heart of what we do. Our, this, this whole premise is that a company owned by fans can create competitive advantages over the rest of the field. And it's this wonderful virtuous cycle where we feel by bringing fans into the process and finding smart, creative ways to harness their collective wisdom and passion and experience, um, and, and then using that as a company to make better decisions so that decisions are not made just by like, oh, does Jeff like the movie? Does Paul like the movie? Do our development executives like it? You know, but instead synthesizing feedback from tens of thousands of people uh, around the world, we feel like that allows us to make smarter decisions. Those in turn benefit the company. And like I said, you know, when you invest in Legion M, you own a piece of the company. And so if the company's successful, you ultimately... Uh, uh, participate in that. So, yeah, I was uh, looking at one of the interesting things that seems like that's relatively recent for you guys that you have a scout app, a film scout app that right now, I, I guess, was used at, at Sundance. But the idea is that people get on there who are part of Legion M and they go, oh, well, these are the films that I want to see. These are the films I did enjoy seeing. Uh, and then people can see how everything ranked. And I assume that to some degree that comes into what the ways that the company moves forward with other projects? Yeah, Film Scout is probably one of one of the best examples of something that we do that is fun and engaging with our community, but it is also really valuable in the gener in the data that it generates and the insight that it provides to the company. Um, so what Film Scout is, is it's essentially a game. It's like playing fantasy sports for film nerds like us in our community. We can apply it to different film festivals. Uh, we just did it at Sundance. We've done it multiple years at, at Sundance. We've identified films using um, Film Scout and, and bought and released films or gotten involved in the release of a film through Film Scout. So the way it works is we load up all the films that are going to be shared ahead of the festival so people can start playing in advance. And they're acting like a film scout. It's an app on your phone. It's in uh, the Google Play Store and the iTunes uh, storefront. And you just download it to your phone. You sign up and you start getting these matchups where you have to, you know, read the description of the film. Um, whatever data or information is available to cast, if there's a trailer, we'll throw that in there. A lot of these films are brand new. They've never been seen before because many, you know, at a big festival like Sundance, most of the films are premiering in the U.S. for the first time. And so we're, we're, you're evaluating them, but you're evaluating them not just on whether you like them, uh, but also whether you think other people will like them. Uh, and that's really important distinction because as the game is played, thousands of people doing, you know, tens of thousands of matchups, we're generating data on, well, what are the films at Sundance that you know, people are predicting will be the most interested, um, uh, but also what movies are people most interested in? Um, <clears throat> and we're also measuring the people that are playing. There's a leaderboard, just like fantasy sports. How good are you at picking the outcome? Um, you can get measured by that. And, you know, there are, we have a leaderboard uh, where we now have people in our community that have demonstrated year after year that they're really good at picking what movies people will be interested in. 
Uh, and that the other component of it is we invite everybody and uh, normally, you know, pre-COVID and hopefully post-COVID uh, to come be at the festival, go watch movies and write a detailed review. And this is a really, really important element. This year, actually, it was kind of, you know, when it's virtual, it's even easier for people because they can, you know, buy the virtual pass or, or get a virtual ticket and watch the movie and, and, and write a review. But this is a really, you know, another element of Film Scout that's really valuable in helping us predict the ultimate Rotten Tomato scores, because we have some of the first reviews of films. You know, keep in mind, these movies are, re are premiering for the first time. We have thousands of people signing up and playing this game. And then maybe, um, you know, some of them are watching the movies and quickly writing a detailed review. So we, you know, we immediately have our kind of watch list. These are the movies that are resonating. And then we have that, you know, critical data to say, oh, okay, these movies, you know, everyone wanted to watch them, but all the reviews are bad. So, I'm, you know, that could be, you know, um, something that we want to explore or, or just pass up. Uh, but then here's a movie that's getting amazing reviews. Uh, and so we, we, crunch all this data, we look through it, and then we we make decisions. And it's, uh, you know, it's really fun for our community. Next week, Jeff and Taylor will be um, taking everyone through the, the Film Scout results. Right after that, we're going to be applying Film Scout to South by Southwest. There are movies that were already identified uh, in the past. I don't know that I have any up here, but oh yeah, Memory, The Origins of Alien. Loved that movie. Documentary film that we uh, co-acquired the rights with screen media. Um, all of the movies that we've identified and gotten involved with um, via Film Scout are all, you know, certified fresh Rotten Tomatoes. So that's just kind of, you know, um, the ability for Legion M to not only predict what people are interested in, but then to know in advance before anyone else does you know, to be able to predict what the Rotten Tomato scores. This is another thing that's just so valuable to the company, but it's, and it's valuable because it's coming from our community, which is having fun doing it. You know, it's one of our, you know, Jeff mentioned the virtuous cycle. The other thing we talk about is having fun can be good business. You know, the idea of watching films at, at Sundance is really appealing and interesting and reviewing and learning more about those films and getting kind of insight into you know, what films have traction, that that's something that people just do because it's interesting and fun. But the idea of, and then going to Sundance is often a bucket list for, you know, most of the people in our community. But there's a totally different experience when you're learning about these films as you're playing this game called Film Scout. It's kind of like how fantasy sports changes watching sports. You know, all of a sudden, you you have a vested interest in this. You're really passionately engaged in it. Um, you go to like in normal times, going to Sundance as a co-owner of a company that has a lounge on Main Street, where investors are meeting up and having drinks together and going to watch movies. And ultimately, the insight that you're providing is providing valuable data to that company to make smarter decisions. That's the completely next level Sundance experience. And, you know, that's that's something that we do on a regular basis. I, I was excited to hear you say South by because that's coming up here. And I go, to, yep. I've been oh, going yeah. to South by, Austin, aren't you? I have been going for like 20 years straight. So yeah. I'm literally at the point I know so, it's so well that people come to me who are going to the festival and go, how do you find every year you're like, I got into all these free things that were amazing. <laughs> how do you do it? I'm like, oh, you're messing with the master. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to be hitting you up because uh, we, we're very likely going to be coming out there this year. So. Oh, that's that's great. We'll definitely I'd say I'd buy you a beer. But if you're hanging out with me, we'll be getting free drinks. So. All right. Well, either way, I'll buy you a beer. I love and we'll it. Find some free beer. That sounds good to me. <laughs> uh, so you know, you're talking about with the, the Scout app and other things with uh, going and becoming a partner in films that are already produced. Do you all do things, get involved with things from the ground up? Yeah. So we uh, uh, we've literally been involved, I think, at this point in 
every single stage of film and now television uh, development. And so if you look at our slate uh, on our webpage, you'll see there are projects, you know, especially early on as when we were just starting up the company, most of the stuff that we were doing was getting involved with other people's projects. So, you know, Colossal, Mandy, uh, we worked with Dean Devlin on Bad Samaritan. We worked with uh, uh, Searchlight on um, Tolkien. Uh, and, you know, we worked with, uh, Kevin Smith and, uh, um, I mean, so many, so many amazing partners, the, the, the film that we bought memory, of the origins of alien at Sundance. So those are all examples of us, you know, getting involved either as an equity financier that helped, helped finance the movie, um, or as someone who came in after the film was already produced and then, you know, picking it up or partnering with the distributor to release it. Most of the, in fact, all of those movies would have existed even without Legion M. Uh, but over the past few years, and partially because it, development takes time, uh, we've been making more and more inroads on the development side. So I, I mentioned it briefly briefly earlier, uh, but, but we had two really pivotal points this year where we leveled up as a company. We feel like we're at an inflection point right now. Uh, but one of them was a movie called Man in the White Van that uh, we produced. This was the first film that Legion M was completely responsible for producing Soup to Nuts. So we found the financing for it. We uh, helped develop the script. Um, Terry Lubroff uh, was literally, who's our, our COO and our head of development, was on set uh, for three months in Shreveport, Louisiana as the producer on the film. Uh, that, that film stars Sean Astin and Ali Larder and Madison Wolf and Breck Basinger. It's got a great cast, a uh, really strong uh, script. It's a uh, true crime thriller uh, about a man in a white van. It's actually based on an, a, a, a true story, which was, you know, really the beginning of that whole trope, the whole uh, uh, man in the white van trope. And so uh, that one should be coming out. It's in post-production right now. They're just, you know, they're just uh, assembling the, 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 the final assemblies, the, the first final assemblies in, in the mm -hmm. editing process. And so it's really exciting to see that one come together. We hope that it'll be releasing later this year, but that's uh, was a wonderful opportunity for Legion M because that's one that we put together and, you know, have been involved from day one. We were allowed to, you know, we have the capability in those cases to bring more of our community in. We had so many people on that film that were, that were working on set. Um, and uh, it's just been an amazing uh, experience for us. In fact, actually all of our round eight investors are going to have their name in the credits. That's one of the perks that oh, comes with, with round eight, awesome. which is really cool. So, 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 so that was one huge thing on the on the feature film side. The other thing is uh, we sold our first um, series to a streamer and uh, we can't talk about it because uh, everything's covered by NDA. It's not expected to release until probably 2023. Um, and so we're not allowed to publicly talk about it. The streamer doesn't want to announce it. Uh, all I can say is it's one of the streamers that you know quite well. And uh, um, it's, uh, it's an animated, uh, adult animated series. And, you know, we were responsible for de completely developing the property. Uh, we are producer. That project wouldn't exist without Legion M. And, uh, you know, we're producers on it. So uh, as a company, this is exciting for us because these are, uh, you know, we get paid uh, producer's fees on both of these projects, uh, both Man in the White Van and um, the streaming project. We get paid producer fees um, in the streaming case. It's literally for every episode that's made. But both of them also have these long term sort of bets. And so, uh, you know, where we have back end on the movie. And, you know, if the if this streaming series goes on to have subsequent seasons or become a franchise, we've got opportunity with that. So it's it's really it's exciting for us because the more early we're involved and the more intimately involved, the more we can bring our community into it and harness those competitive advantages that we've been trying to cultivate. But it's also, again, if you think of the movie industry as a business, every film that you release, uh, every series that you can get out there is a swing for the fence, right? You know, there's, there's, there's 
a million scripts out there just dying to get made. The number that get made is much smaller. The number that go on to become hits is much smaller. And the number that go on to become franchises, um, you know, is, is smaller still, but that's, that's what you're doing it for. And so, you know, we feel like if, if we can, if we can do just as well as everyone else, uh, you know, if you get enough swings at the fence, you'll, you'll, you'll get a, a double or a triple or maybe a, maybe a grand slam home run. And so, you know, our whole, the whole premise is that because we're owned by fans and we can develop these competitive advantages, if we can just put our finger on the sale, on the scale, we can do the exact same thing that everybody else is doing, but just be 5% or 10% more successful because of these competitive advantages we create. We think that that's a recipe for a company that could become, that could reshape the future of Hollywood. So to address the elephant in the room, as it were, and I'm not talking about the Nerf dart that Jeff has been like fidgeting with the entire time. <laughs> I mean, the Emmys that you guys both have in your background. You, know, you won one of the most prestigious oh, awards thing. in the world. Oh, I, did, I forgot I put that there. <laughs> yeah, just I, I, I just put toilet paper on it in the bathroom. It's yeah. like, works perfectly for that. <laughs> Where'd those come from? So, well, Jeff and I, you know, we're we're a co-founding team. We've been together. We've worked together for 20 years. Uh, our first company was a company called Moby TV, which was one of the early streaming pioneers. Um, and we we grew that company from, you know, just three guys working out of a garage to, you know, a company with offices around the world, over 500 employees, close to 100 million in annual revenues. We raised over 100 million. And we were awarded with a primetime Emmy award by the Television Academy for really creating a new category of television. I mean, a lot of people probably don't realize it because it's so common today, but you know, 18 years ago when we were doing it, TV was really stuck in the living room. You couldn't watch TV on your phone, you didn't watch it on your computer, you just watched it through your cable box or your antennas on your television, which was typically in your living room. Uh, and why we broke TV out of the living room and, you know, created a whole new space. And uh, yeah, so we, we were awarded with a, an Emmy award. What we like to say, it's actually kind of funny because when we first started Moby TV and we're proposing it, you know, because industries get kind of stuck in their ways. And, you know, this is one of the reasons why we love the idea that Legion M is, it has an anchor point in Hollywood, but we also have some perspective from outside Hollywood, which we think is really nice so that we're not so entrenched in, well, this is just how things have been done for so many years. We're, we're changing things, you know, normally fans aren't involved in the process. They get to watch the movie when it comes out. And, you know, we're completely changing how this industry works. And just like we did with uh, with our pioneering streaming company, you know, where we we really changed the whole concept of television. And now, you know, fast forward 20 years, uh, it's just incredible um, how much things have, have changed. But what, what we like to say is, you know, when we first started telling people, hey, we want to put TV on cell phones, uh, and we want to create these, you know, services that people can, you know, watch and, and, and be entertained on their phones. A lot of the entertainment industry, like literally would laugh us out of the room. We had one senior executive at one of the major studios. He's a good friend of mine now, but at the time he said, he literally looked me in the eye and said, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> and then three years later, we're winning an Emmy Award for Oops. for pioneering this whole space. And everyone, like now, everyone's jumped on board. Of course, everyone knew that this is what would happen. But right, I I, really I, I got to say I, I I'm impressed. Really, like the, Matt, y'all are already huge innovators, and a lot of people are talking about Legion M and the way that this is going to be the next big major innovation as well, and the way that we consider funding movies and getting people involved with it. I'm, I just as a, a side story, back when I moved to Austin in the early '90s, I had a friend of mine who was a successful bar owner. He's like, 
Chris, I trust you. I'm thinking about opening a new business. Well, do you have any ideas? And we're both from like Maryland, Virginia area where they would have these really cheapy cinema and draft houses. You know, it was like yep. bad beer, bad food, but like third run movies. But you could drink in the theater and they would have yep. small special events. I was like, what if we did that? But we made it much more upscale. We had like special events and we have like comedians come over and do like, like mystery science theater with movies and would do like all this stuff. And he goes, I just don't see that taking off here. <laughs> I like to oh remind him every time I see him. We yeah. could have been Tim Lee, God you damn it. Been, you know, <laughs> Tim Lee's one of our advisors. He's an that, advisor to Legion M. That was my that was my segue yeah. <laughs> because I saw that you have you have a lot of advisors. Tim League is in fact one of them as well as you said Dean Devlin, uh mm -hmm. the actor and director Bill Duke and then yep. uh Leonard Malton who also we consider sort of an honorary Austinite because he comes to yep. uh Fantastic oh, yeah. Fest he every year here in town. We all we all just love him to pieces. But uh that's that's pretty cool. Your newest one is the great Bill Shatner, which is like, you know, I mean, I grew up a Trekkie so I'm just like, ugh. Bill. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, uh, that, that was uh, been amazing for us. Uh, and it's, it, it's kind of funny because we, uh, uh, we managed to bump into him at a Comic-Con, uh, David Baxter, who's our, our head of development is, or our, sorry, our VP of development, um, uh, it knew him because, uh, uh, he, he had met him. He's friends with the producers of senior moment, which was the last movie that he did, uh, with Christopher Lloyd. And so we knew that he was coming to Los Angeles Comic-Con and David kind of architected uh, an opportunity to bump into him at the Comic-Con with, uh, with Paul and the two of them went back there. And it, it's kind of funny because, you know, David Baxter is, what is he? Six foot seven, six foot eight, like he's foot eight. enormous. Yeah. He, he, he was dressed as Indiana Jones because he's like a, a world-class cosplayer, like incredible cosplay. Um, but he's, you know, the six foot nine I, I, Indiana Jones and Paul comes back. And I think Bill was kind of going like, all right, what's going on? You know, they <laughs> they uh, 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 they caught him just like eating a salad in the green room. Uh, anyway, and so, you know, we pitched him on a project because we had a project that we were interested in talking to him about. Uh, and he was interested in that. But when we were uh, when they were explaining what Legion M is, he was like, that's genius. And uh, and so it was just wonderful because it was really organic. We ended up having a few calls with him uh, where he, you know, we explained the concept more. Uh, he dug in. He's he's I mean, he's amazing. He's 90 years old. He's still sharp as a tack. He's very astute. Um, you know, mm -hmm. he asked a lot of really difficult questions. I, I mean, difficult just meaning complex or technical uh, or astute maybe about, you know, the stock structure, about how Legion M works. Uh, we sent him our SEC filing so he could review that. He wanted to, you know, know what the what the uh, salaries were of the principals, you know, to make sure that it wasn't one of those things like a, a charity scam where all the money is going to the executives and none of the money is actually being used for something useful. Um, and so, you know, he kind of put us through the ringer uh, due diligence wise, but uh, ultimately, you know, was was happy with all the answers that we provided. And so he agreed to join as an advisor and actually wrote a um, an op ed uh, that was published in Slash Film, which was absolutely amazing, uh, you know, and it's completely organic. Like he's he's a part of Legion M because he truly and genuinely Believes. I mean, he's a person that understands the power of fandom. And although it's remarkable, if you know anything about, you know, Bill Shatner, and if you've seen any of his documentaries, he's had a very complex relationship with fans over his career. It's only oh, been, yeah. <laughs> I think, in the last 10 or 15 years that he kind of came to terms with the fact that, you know, when he dies, he will be remembered forever as Captain Kirk. And as someone who is an actor and a, a theatrical actor and has played all these amazing roles, that really, you know, was hard for him to reconcile. It's, it's amazing. In one of the documentaries, he talks about the fact that when people would say, beam me up, Scotty, to him, he thought that they were being derisive. And, right. you know, and that they were teasing him because all that he was, was, you know, this Captain Kirk on a syndicated science fiction television show. But, uh, you know, he, he finally 
kind of, you know, got over. I mean, as crazy as it sounds to say this about Captain Kirk, but he finally got past his own insecurities about that and learned to accept it um, and embrace it. But yeah, he, he's, uh, he's been a phenomenal advisor for us. Um, the op-ed is incredible. You should read it. And he's talking about how fans pulling together. It's funny. I read the manifesto, the one of us manifesto prior to uh, coming on today. And, you know, we're definitely cut from the same cloth because what he talks about is it, we, we live in this polarized world where everything seems to be architected to pull us apart, right? Our technology, our social media, our politics, the, you know, the media media are all really designed to exploit these differences that we have and pull us apart, you know, for profit or for power. And, um, you know, but this is an area, fandom is one area where we can all come together and we can all, you know, bond and unite over the things that we love as opposed to the differences between us. And I, I think that especially having come back from space, um, that was something that he felt really passionate about. And, and we're just, we're thrilled to have him on our, on our advisor, uh, our ed advisory board. Our advisory board is amazing. I mean, aside from the names that people know that you mentioned, we have executives from Netflix and Sony and Lucasfilm and Epic Games. And I mean, just like a really fantastic advisory board that helps us navigate the business. You know, we talk about Legion M. It's all about the community and what the fans want. And we think there's no better body on earth than a legion of fans to help us decide what's cool and what's interesting and what people want to watch. But when it comes to the business of Hollywood, that is something that most people don't understand. And the only way that you navigate that successfully is if you have people that have a deep understanding of the nuances of the business um, and they've got contacts and they can tell you like who to do business with and who are people that you should avoid. And so, you know, for us, we, we kind of feel like there's two sides of the scale. We got the community on one side uh, and we've got our advisory board on the other side and, and Paul's in my job and the rest of the management team is to factor in all this data and, and use that to, uh, to steer the ship. You know, I just in my head, as you're telling me about this, I'm, and for this to work for you guys, you've just got to put in your heads, um, on, on, uh, bagpipes, amazing grace. All right. And Shatner going of all the film investment ideas I've come across. <laughs> Jeff and Paul's was the most human. <laughs> he would I literally do that if we pitched him on it he would he, he would probably do it we're, we're talking to him about doing some fun cool things together that would that would be great i'm He's always really, excited to see more from shatner he's uh you know he was my hero growing up you know <laughs> yeah I, he's, he's a fascinating he's got a lot of depth to him Oh yeah, no, no yeah. question. Like just, uh, just a multi-layered, really interesting guy. Uh, yeah. Tell me a little bit about the other ways in which fans who you can, even if you're not an investor, you can join Legion M and like get the emails and get involved in other projects. Like you said, the film scout thing, but either yeah. way, I know that if people are invested in a film, y'all tend to do like cool little events for them as well. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, you can join for free. So if you go to legionm.com, you can sign up and, you know, get uh, get the emails and, you know, access to information. Um, one of the things that we really believe is that the more engaged and fun that our community, investors and free members are having, the more valuable the company is. So anytime we have a movie releasing or we're starting production on a movie, uh, we always put it out to our community. You know, we hire a lot of people from our community for our projects. We even go um, above and beyond. We do some really fun things. Like, for example, uh, our movie Arch Enemy. Oh, pointed the wrong way. Um, <laughs> the car that Joe Manganiello, he steals it in the movie, but it kind of he it makes it his car uh, that he drives around in the, in the movie. The hero's car in that movie is one of our investors' cars. Huh. And, you know, and that was just something that we did. So we, you know, we worked with Adam Egypt Mortimer and let him know, you know, we, we Legion M really firmly believes that you don't make great art by committee. So when we back a project, whether it's Panos working on Mandy or Adam Egypt Mortimer working on Arch Enemy or Warren Skeels on Man in the White Van, we are there to support them and to support their vision. And we want to, you know, add value along the way, but we don't want to interfere. 
And but one of the ways that we can add value is by, you know, offering up a lot of uh, opportunities for, you know, to support the project. And so anytime we start a new a new project, we go to the the team and we talk about it and then we'll put out a list of things that we're going to need for the movie that are also opportunities for our community to get involved, you know, and this is beyond the, of course, you know, we need costume and wardrobe and all those things. And if we can find those people in our community, we absolutely uh, prioritize them, but just even fun things like, you know, in this case, Adam knew that he wanted a really cool car. He had kind of specked out what he was looking for and was planning to just rent something from, you know, the car lot. And we, he said, you know, let's see if, uh, you know, let, let's check and see what the community has. So we put it out there. We had dozens of cars, you know, all they had to do is, you know, let us know if they could get it to LA and it needed to be, you know, on set for these dates, send us a picture of the car, let us know if you need payment or, you know, how you would, how, like what the offer is. A lot of people were saying, you know, of course, just take my car for free. I want to have my car in the movie. Uh, but um, one of our investors, Matt Conkling, ended up, you know, submitting his car. And it was a car that once Adam saw it, he just couldn't believe it. It was this re it's a really cool seven, 1975 El Camino with this very noir paint job that matched the kind of style that Adam was evoking in the film. And as soon as he saw it, he's like, this is the car. I have to have it. You know, and I and it's it, it was amazing experience because for Adam, it helped his creativity. Uh, and then for Matt, it was this e incredible opportunity to go be on set. You know, Matt ended up being in the movie. Uh, he went to the rap party, met all kinds of people. He's a, he was a mechanic. He's still a mechanic. He was working as a full-time mechanic at the time. Now he's working full-time as a mechanic and uh, stunt coordin you know, working with stunt coordinating teams. And his whole career now has changed to be Hollywood oriented. And only because he had this opportunity to be on set and meet some people, he ended up um, being our car wrangler for Man in the White Van. He found us our van and, you know, converted it into the exact, you know, color and, and, um, and you know, creating the van exactly the way the, the director wanted and then was on set throughout the film to make sure all the old cars were were running and he's just he's found a whole new career for himself and this is that's so amazing for us because we we're grateful to Matt for what he's you know for believing in us and for getting involved uh and Matt's grateful to us for you know giving him a new opportunity and you know and I think that's that virtuous cycle that Jeff mentioned before I mean we have countless examples I could go on all day but you know, we really do genuinely, we want our community to be involved. Like when we released Arch Enemy, where it was during COVID, uh, we we did the premiere at a drive-in. More than half the cars at that drive-in are our investors. You know, we <laughs> want you to, if you're going to invest in Legion M, we want you to have the opportunity to go to a premiere, to visit a set, to be in a movie, to have your car be in a movie, like all these things are available to everyone in our community. Even our animated credit, the you know, our 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 branding that goes in front of our movie is a photo mosaic, an animated photo mosaic of all of our investors and their voices. So they're in our movie um, and TV series every time. Uh, it's funny. I kind of expected Jeff to be the one to talk about the cars, since I know he's sort of a a, a fast car <laughs> nut. <laughs> We're both car guys. Oh, Just okay. one of us is a little faster than the other. <laughs> oh, I yeah. smell a challenge coming at South by Southwest. Take y'all to right. the secret drag strip here. We'll bring the uh, caddy. Get, get her out on the track. Y'all going to have to fight to get some work done when the new Gran Turismo comes out, I'm thinking. But, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, before we get to a few silly questions, let me just ask you all, and you've talked to some extent already about what's coming up for Legion M, what projects that, you know, both you can't talk about, the streaming one, and some of the ones you can, like the, the, the van project that we were just talking about, but what else is, what else should we be looking forward to from you guys? 
Oh my gosh. Like it's, <laughs> this is always a tough question because there are so many projects. Like I think Paul said at the outset, we've got probably 25 different projects on our development slate and we are so excited about them. Unfortunately, there's not a lot that we can talk about. Um, you know, development is a long process and, you know, some of these projects we've been uh, developing uh, for years. Uh, one of the best probably known ones is uh, uh, the Captain Smalls uh, movie Defiant, uh, which is the true life story of Captain Robert Smalls, who was an enslaved Harvard pilot uh, in the Civil War, who was uh, forced to um move, uh, pilot the, uh, uh, the harbor, uh, pilot Confederate warships, uh, around the harbor. And, um, one night, uh, himself and the other enslaved members of the crew, uh, they stole a Confederate warship and staged one of the most elaborate and impactful heists in history. And, uh, it's an amazing true story, uh, that we've been working on. Um, like I said, I think it, it, it's actually a remarkable story because the Genesis, uh, was a, uh, the Genesis for Legion M I should say was a meme that was posted in our Facebook group. And you might've seen it before. It's this, this meme that talks about captain Robert Smalls and, you know, he, 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 he <laughs> pulled off this amazing heist. He went on to, uh, um, he went on to, uh, work with Abraham Lincoln, uh, to, uh, convince Lincoln to, uh, enlist, uh, black soldiers, uh, into the union army, which at the time was a highly controversial issue, especially for a lot of the border States. Uh, then he went on the road and recruited thousands of soldiers that helped tip the, uh, tip the balance of the civil war. Um, he became ultimately the captain of the ship that he stole and fought in 17 battles for the uh, naval battles with the union army. Uh, and then went on to become uh, a senator and to buy the, uh, buy the plantation that he was raised on. Um, hmm. and own it. Uh, and so it's just this absolutely incredible story. And so the meme, you know, kind of outlines, you know, just in bullet points, all these amazing accomplishments and says, guys, we've had 11 Spider-Man movies and, and, <laughs> you know, uh, 10 Fast and Furious movies. Why has nobody made a movie out of this man? And so, uh, and it, it came up in our Facebook group and it came actually up actually a couple times and got enormous support from people. And then somebody piped up on one of those Facebooks and said, you know, I actually wrote a script about this. And it turns out that it's, it's, uh, it, it was, um, uh, an early Legion M investor. It's an old friend of, uh, David Baxter's as well. That's how he had found out about the Legion, but completely unbeknownst to any of us or David or anybody, uh, he had written a script about this. And so, you know, he, He's a published author uh, with a, a series of best-selling uh, books in Germany and around the world. And so we took a look at the script and it was amazing. And we sent it to um, uh, around Hollywood and got coverage on it. And the coverage was really strong. And so we we adopted and said, we're going to make this movie. And, uh, you know, so we've been working on it now for literally years. Uh, and we've got some, you know, we're making some progress even this week. We think that we're about to, you know, pass a, a pass a big milestone on it but it's the sort of thing like you know that movie will will take a couple of years more probably uh to actually um come out if we're successful you know and, and that's that's the other thing about hollywood is that uh when you're talking about development uh, it's very high risk high reward um sort of propositions because the fact is for every you know 25, you know, 100 projects that you develop, you know, if you can get a few made, then then you're doing pretty well. And so anyway, we've got a ton of projects. Um, you know, I, I think that we we're always looking for ways that we can double down and get fans more involved. You know, right now we're spending a lot of time thinking about how we can expand our development capabilities. Uh, we're in discussions right now with a renowned science fiction author about optioning one of their books. Uh, hmm. We've got now that we've produced this film and sold this series, it's opened up so many doors for us on the development side that we're really expanding 
expanding that part of our business. We're hiring uh, a new development executive to come in and, and help wrangle this stuff. We're trying to figure out how we can harness the power of fans to find new IP, whether it's comic books or um, novels or short stories or, or stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, we're still, we're, we scouted at Sundance. We're doing South, South by uh, next and, you know, still looking to see if there are projects that we can get in on other people's projects, um, hidden gems that we think are films that, you know, have opportunity and, and maybe um, are not getting the attention that they deserve. So it's, um, it's a wild ride. It's, it's every year. I, I think, like I said earlier, it, five, six years ago, it was just Paul and I jumping up and down saying like, oh, wouldn't this be a cool idea? And now that we've got 35,000 investors raised over $15 million, uh, we just successfully so far have been leveling up. And, you know, we haven't made it yet, uh, not by a long shot. You know, that's the thing with startups. They're super high risk and super high reward. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, the startups that succeed, it's a very, very small percentage, but those are the ones that that change the world. And, and we're just doing everything we can to make Legion M one of those success stories. And it is impressive what you guys have already done so far. No question about it. I think anybody who has listened this far is probably already going, okay, what can I afford to put down on one of these <laughs> things? Because this this sounds kind of neat. Um, I, I just wanted to ask you guys just some of the, the things that are on your profiles here. I saw Paul's a big Coen Brothers fan, which I am as well. And I wanted to point out, it is a tragedy that the tragedy of Macbeth was not nominated for Best Picture because that is just like someone has gone insane that that was not. What were they thinking, quite frankly? Uh, I, oh. uh, uh, also, we were talking about people you work with. Paul noted Robot Chicken, and I know that Seth Green for, and his production company is associated and works with the comp, uh, Legion M as well. Yeah, Seth and uh, the team. So, sorry, I was on mute uh, for that last one. But, yeah, I love the Cone Brothers. Lots of unjust uh, circumstances. Nick Cage didn't get a nomination for Pig either. I couldn't believe that this year. Um, but so, uh, yeah, Seth Green and the team, uh, behind, uh, Robot Chicken, they were actually one of our founding partners, uh, together with them and Tim League at Alamo Draft House. They were among the, the earliest supporters of ours. In fact, the er, an earlier incarnation of Legion M, uh, was going to be really dedicated to kind of Robot Chicken and, uh, Stupid Buddy Studios. And we ended up kind of deciding that it was a bigger opportunity to go this way. Uh, and we still need to find a project to work with them on. And um, <laughs> so that's, uh, hopefully that's going to happen sometime soon. Oh, we I have a, I have a, I have a pitch for you. Are right, you ready? Okay. Okay, right, so I, I call it Exquisite Corpse, although that's not technically what it is, but it's close enough. Because the idea is kind of like whose light is, is it anyway, anyway, but you get a group of comedians to do that thing where each one gets to write one sentence of a story. And then yeah. they'd like go for like a page and then somebody, another guy has to actually film it and do the short film of it. Oh, I like that. <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. That would be fun. I mean, I those think guys that's are awesome. so creative. It's, it's incredible what they do. Y'all are not just doing movies and TV shows now, too. You're also working on Broadway. You've got Dark Nights and Daydreams adapted from the memoir, The Boy Who Loved Batman, coming up. What, what is that? Yeah, that's a super cool. Um, uh, it's basically the story of uh, Michael Uslan, who's the producer of uh, the 1989 movie Batman uh, and and every every Batman movie since then, including the one uh, that's just coming out. But uh, um, it's an amazing story about how literally Michael Uslan was a blue killer, a blue collar uh, comic book collector, you know, growing up. Um, and uh, as a 22 year old kid, he somehow managed to acquire the rights, uh, the movie rights for Batman. Uh, which included partly selling part of his comic book collection that he had that he had uh, uh, developed as a, as a child. And so um, it's an absolutely amazing story about uh, just a regular guy <laughs> doing, you know, the dream, making the dream come true and all the trials and tribulations and what he did uh, to make that happen. And so we, uh, uh, we've, partnered with the Nederlander organization, 
uh, and Michael to uh, pull this uh, together and uh, we developed it. We did a, a whole Indiegogo uh, where we allowed people to kind of get involved uh, with the project. And, and uh, part of that included uh, for a lot of folks coming out to some of the workshops uh, where we're, we're, we're developing it, you know, and they staged the, 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 the working version, like a rough draft of the play in front of a, in front of a live audience to get feedback and, and see, see what lines are landing and, and what's working and not working and all that sort of stuff. And so it's just a great, you know, uh, just another example of, of how we're trying with every single project It starts with, okay, how can yeah. we, how can we involve our community with this? How can we open the gates of Hollywood for them? And how can we use them to create a competitive advantage that helps all of us uh, um, uh, succeed? So we uh, no uh, no updates on that one. I don't think I, I know they've been making a lot of progress, and you know that's one that that the goal is to get it to Broadway, and we're just we're waiting with bated breath to see, you know, to hear uh, how the the next step in the process is going. Uh, and as well, I see y'all both like board games. I've actually heard people say, why isn't there a Mandy board game? Which just because <laughs> I live in Austin where people are insane and they love insane movies and they also love board gaming here. Like they love board gaming here. Like Mondo. Hey, I mean, we did make some mac and cheese. I mean, we did get the mac and <laughs> cheese. Did. Right? But yeah, you're right. We A board game, it's been talked about. It's been <laughs> It's been talked about. Yeah. I wouldn't well, rule it out. I want to thank both of you guys. This has been absolutely fascinating. I hope that people get from this that this is, you know, maybe the future of the way that movies and TV shows and, you know, Broadway plays are made. I would be excited to see things go. I always want to see it come back to the people. And that really is, I mean, that's exactly what you are doing. Get involved yourselves. If you don't like what Hollywood's doing, you don't have to like it. You can get involved with the projects you actually want to see get made. And just uh, last thing I want to say before we leave is just, Jeff, it says you were a theme park engineer. I'm like a theme park maniac. What, what, what did you do? Uh, so I was a mechanical engineer in college. I, um, I did, a, a I, I discovered theme park engineering was like a thing. And when I was probably like a sophomore, I'm like, okay, that's what I'm doing. And I literally devoted my last few years to it. Uh, in college, I, I got a job. Uh, I was working. I helped develop the um, Jurassic Park, the ride at Universal Studios Hollywood. That was my first project. You have the helmet uh, right behind you. Out of college. Yep. Yeah, that's true, actually. The hard I wore this. So it was funny because, like I said, I was, this is my first job out of college. I was low man on the totem pole. The project uh, got behind schedule. And so they needed people to go on site and, um, you know, work on the installation of it. And so, you know, again, I was, I'm literally drilling holes in concretes and schlepping stuff and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, I was wearing that hard hat uh, at, when Steven Spielberg came by, uh, came through to tour. And I literally stood face to face with Steven Spielberg as he was surveying uh, the ride based on his movie. And I was dressed as one of the, I mean, you know, <laughs> wearing the hard hat from the movie. It was a very meta moment. It was super cool. Clever guy. <laughs> sorry i had to well, i'm so racking yeah. my head for the appropriate pun to use from jurassic park and there were just so it. many <laughs> yes yes anyway thank you gentlemen tell everyone where you would like to point them at to get involved with legion m yeah i would say go to legion m.com you can find all the information there um you know we have more information about our projects our background what we've been up to actually if you scroll down on that main page we keep a running tab of pretty much everything we've been up to since we started the company. So if you keep going, it'll just it'll just keep loading more and more content. Um, but then you can also find us on uh, all the social media. Uh, you know, we're Legion M official uh, at, on pretty much all of them. Uh, we're very active on Facebook and Instagram and uh, a little less on Twitter, but we're there. And um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to have you join. As we mentioned, you can join for free. If you want to get on the waiting list for the next round, uh, you can do that as well. Um, you can find all that information on our website. Well, thank you, Jeff Anderson and Paul Scanlon. And you guys check out Legion M. And thanks for talking with me. Thanks for thank having you, us Chris. on the show, Chris. It's been great. Yeah.